Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Hey, today what I thought I'd do is I've had some uh, people that were interested in they're interested in an LCR meter without spending the money like something like this CEM, this uh, DT9935. It's around $160, $165 dollars. So uh, I think it was Ricardo that uh, most recently asked for this and I've had this B side that I've demonstrated and it can read capacitance up to pretty large values. So I've got some capacitors, we're gonna measure those. I have some inductors, measure those. Uh, but they're also, besides being an LCR meter, they're like a component tester, or at least a component identifier. They're great for that. Uh, I've got this new guy, I'm gonna package him, open up that dude. Uh, these guys both range right around 30 bucks or less, okay? And this one is a less expensive version, which on the specifications, they sound very similar to these two. So I'm thinking that, I'm kind of wondering if it's the same electronic design and different packaging. It's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Uh, now this comes under different names. I'm gonna list some in the description below, uh, but and I'll put some links to all these guys, including this guy. This guy's a nice LCR. This guy, one advantage it has, which I don't think these things do, is you can change the frequency of the test for capacitance because capacitance and inductance changes over frequency. And also ESR. Uh, this guy, and I think these guys also give ESR. So we're gonna look at that and we're gonna look at the, you know, accuracy. We're gonna compare it to this dude. And we're gonna try this one and it's different frequencies. I think there's four or five frequency ranges we can go on this. So we'll kind of see uh, which frequencies these things use. I put a scope on this guy back when I tested it. And I didn't see like a frequency and oscillator that, you know, put a frequency on there and then did some kind of impedance check. It looked to me more like a step function. So pretty fast rise time. And I think what it does is it does that and then looks at the equation for rise time. I think that's how it's doing it. And uh, anyway, I have this cumin, uh, or cumin. It's another name for this guy. And this guy, I'll, I'll bring it or show it to you, but it comes in a little kit. So we'll open both these two guys up. I bought these guys, they've been kind of sitting around waiting for me to catch up for some of the other videos because trying to catch up. Okay, so let's just get these guys because I want to start using these things on the bench to, uh, you know, to test some things. And so I got to open them up and build them. This one needs to be built up. And by the way, I didn't mention the price, I don't think. This one's under $15. You can find this under 15 bucks. okay? And I, I don't think it matters what name it comes under. I was trying to find one that was already built up in the case, so I didn't have to do it. But anyway, I'll show how it comes. And uh, I think the last one of these I built, they go together pretty quick. So let's just do it, all right? Hey, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It looks like most of my uh, viewers are not subscribers, so let's subscribe, okay guys? Give it a thumbs up, that helps the video a lot, supports the channel, appreciate it guys. And give me your comments, ideas, and suggestions, okay? And I'll try to follow up and, and uh, do some of those. I've got a list of some, some other folks have mentioned, and I've got some eval cards up here and over here, and I've got this power supply with an audio amplifier that I'm gonna work on that. I think I'm gonna do that in the next video after these review videos I'm doing right now, okay? All right, hey, thanks guys. All right, guys, so let's open up this little guy here, the Drock tester. Who does that remind you of? All right, this guy needs a battery. Wow, that's cool, came with uh, Okay, I see. It comes with the little uh, carrier thing here. These are pretty cool, actually, these little clip-ons. I remember back in school using those for EEPROMs. Okay, let me put a battery in this, and then let's check out this one. This one is going to take a little bit of assembly. Okay, so it came with this. Oh, it comes with a screwdriver. So... Yeah, just some screws, screws and standoffs, some plastic. Make our own little plastic box. 
and it comes with this little brown um, protective cover over the plastic. It just peels off once you get ready to use it. So yeah, these are the sides. You can't see how it goes, right? And then we'll screw it, put the board in there and screw it together. And I'll be right back. All right, so there's the back side of the board. There's the oscillator. Here's the control chip. A little transistor it looks like here. And a few more smaller transistors across here. Some tape holding the display on to the back. Here's a little test thing for surface mount. Here's a clip on. I think they call these ZIF connectors. And then our test button. And uh, yeah, very similar design to the ones below. The ZIF socket here. Line that up. Okay, that's interesting. When I when I line this, try to attempt to line this guy up. I don't see the little connector rows coming exactly in the right spot. So I think what I have to do is line one of them up and then kind of pull and bend all those pins towards the other side like that. There we go. All right. All right. So here's our testers. Now this little guy that I put together. Uh, you know, it's all clear plastic, kind of cool look. But the thing is, is I tried to see if I put together correctly, and it looked like that was the only way it went together. But that surface mount pad area down there, I don't know how I'm going to get to that little surface mount part. Uh, like this right here is right here on the surface. Easy to get to. All right, guys. So I've got this test seat set up here to this cap. And it says it's a 330 nanofarad. So let's go ahead and check it out with the first meter. Battery checks out okay. 323.6 with 2.6 ESR. Okay. Okay, so now I've put the cap in here and I straddled it across from pins one to pin two. And well, whatever, from first column to second column. Okay. So this one has 331 nanofarads with 7.9 ohms. Okay, so straddling um, the different columns here with this one. Let's test it. Version 2.4, by the way. Okay, uh, 337.3 and 0.6. Okay, so I'm using uh, the test leads on the CEM. Whoops, let's get those clipped on well. All right, I have those clipped on. I'm not using the little guys down here, the little things where the slots, because this positive slot, they're kind of separated. They didn't come back together, so that's kind of a bummer that the spring tension didn't put this back. But let's go ahead and turn this on. Okay, 337.2. That's a D, so that's that's the dissipation factor. Let's go, and this is one kilohertz, by the way, 337. That's what how it automatically came up. Let's go to the ESR and 1.3 ohms. Okay, this is a 47 nanofarad cap. Let's see what it says. Okay, 4503. That looks pretty darn close. Okay, and uh, this is coming up 45.01. I did it a second time. So, but you know, it's no ESR. So, I think this is a really low frequent uh, ESR on this cap. So, it's interesting that it doesn't offer anything. Okay, so let's see what this little guy does the little drop. Forty-five 45.99, and again, no ESR. Okay, 45.99, very similar to that. Let's try this guy. Okay, 46.86. Again, no ESR. Okay, back to this guy, the CEM. Let's see what it says. Power it up and let do its automatic thing. Okay, 47.08. So they all seem to be coming up really low ESR. Okay, 
except for this number. I don't know what that means. Okay, this is 6800 Mike Fair. This is, uh, I think, the largest one I have right now. So let's try that. And remember, positive, positive, negative, negative, okay? Seems like it's taking a moment long. Oh, it's pretty fast. 66.93. And look at that. I believe that. All right, so on these two, there's no polarity. So I think the way they do it, it doesn't really matter. So let me try to get this poked in here. I don't even know if I have to squish it. You know what? I don't think I'm going to try. It might just damage the squishers. <laughs> okay. Wow, 6557, pretty darn close. And 0.19, that's also close. All right, and I discharged this. It's very important, especially with the big caps, to make sure you discharge. All right, so 6553.11. Okay, guys, so I'm taking this cap and I'm putting these test seats and on, trying to hold them steady. And this CEM, for some reason, is supposed to read up to 20,000 microfarads, so it's within its range, but one kilohertz, it just does not like it. And then if I go to 10K, so 10K, 150 microfarad. 100K, 1500 nanofarad. And 100 hertz, 6.5 millifarads. That's as close as it gets. And then it has 122. Okay, 126.5, but check it out. 1K, whoops. But check out 1K. It just doesn't like it. Wow. Okay, we're going to try a bigger cap to see what the heck is going on. But this, so far, those other meters are doing a better job than this guy. All right, guys, so what I have here is each one of these caps is 10,000 microfarads, okay? And there's four of them in parallel, and it's tied between. And I've got it tied right here between those. These four are tied between these terms. I want to try the leads that came with the meter here. So I put the minus on pins three. I think one of three I read in this little manual that came with it. Uh, that between one to three gives ESR measurement. So let's try the, doing that. I'm going to put negative on this guy. Touching right down here, squeezing, holding steady. That's taking a little while. Okay, 27.3.16. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Okay, so for this one, I kind of stuck these leads in the opposite. I put them here and then I put some uh, alligator clips on and clip on down here. I'm holding them steady. This is the first time I've done the test. Maybe there's no contact or it's just taking a while. Okay, 26.79. That's interesting. And 0.41 ohm. Okay, let's give this thing a go and see what it comes up with. It seems like it takes a while longer with these uh, big caps. Okay, there we go. 20, 26.65.19. One thing I think that it might be measuring off here, and let me remove these, is there is a bleeder resistor on these banks, and I'm wondering if this is throwing off the settings. So this is kind of an in-circuit test, so 
you have to expect maybe some inaccuracies when you're doing it in circuit because of things like that. Okay, let's try this big old inductor. There's a part number. Let's try this out. I'm going to hold this down and push this button. Shoot. Okay, 0.01 millihenry and 0.2 ohms. So I'm holding the alligator clips down on this just so they don't pop off. And got the probe in here. You got squeezed down. So let's go ahead and hit the button. Alright, so 0 0.01 microhenry, 0.2 ohm. That could be right. Have to look up the uh, data sheet on this. It's a big inductor. But, okay, so let's go and check out the other meter. Okay, so now we've got it on the drop. Let's try that. Okay, 0 0.1 and 0.2. That's about the same. Okay, guys, I'm just going to have to hold this one and let's power it on and try it out. Okay, 13.4 microhenries and 0.48 ohms. Okay, guys, so this is uh, meant for a speaker crossover. It's a big inductor with this flat cable. It's really nice. It's a 1 millihenry, 0.37 ohm, 16 gauge equivalent. So let's give that a try. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, 0.91 and 0.5 ohm. Okay, let's try out this guy. Okay, 0.85 millihenry and 0.7 ohm. Try the drop out. Okay, 0 0.97, 0 0.6 ohms. Okay, so for some part identifiers. Okay, so I've got that little part in here. Let's see what this thing says it is. 179 millivolts and 182 millivolts. It says pin 2 is the cathode and 1 and 3 are anodes. Okay. Okay, let's try the cumin. Same thing, pin 2, so degrees, 177, 179. All right, now for the drock. So I've put these in the same orientation, pin 1, 2, and 3. Okay, same thing, uh, 176 and 179. All right, now we have this old guy. Let's see what it is. Okay, since the center pin is cut off and it's just very hard to push down the first two where the center one can touch here, then you have to get a little creative. The center one's tied to this uh, heat sink on the back. So I'm going to put these in. I'm going to touch this pin 2 on the heat sink and try that. Okay, there we go. So there it's a N MOSFET and it's pin for, 1 is gate, 2 is drain, and 3 is source. Has a threshold 3.4 volts. And a forward voltage drop on this diode from 3 to 2 of uh, half a volt. Okay, I'm going to try to be creative. I uh, used a liter resistor in pin 2 and bend it over to touch that thing. Let's see if that works. Okay, and I have to hold it. So, there we go. Uh, 3.4, 10 nano, 
gate drain source. Looks like the same information. It doesn't give me the diode drop between the two. So that's a little bit different. Okay, let's try it in this guy. K211 and 723. So a little higher gain, it's probably got a little different test current, and it's saying emitter base collector, so it agrees there. Okay, let's try this guy. By the way, I just want to point out this thing the way it's laid one, two, three, three, one, two, three. And then on the top side, it's one, two, three, three, one, two, three. So that's the way the pin number is labeled. So you got to be careful because if you put it in a one and have two leads in three and three, then obviously you're going to get wrong readings, which I've done. All right, meter base collector, same thing, 210, 730. So this one looks like it has a very similar test current to this. All right, guys, how about a simple resistor? That's a brown, black, red. There we go. Pretty close to 1K. 995.5. Okay, now for this one. Okay, 989. Okay, let's try this guy. And what's that? 995.9. .9. All right, so let's just try it in this guy. Should be able to read basic resistors, right? And by the way, this one's okay, 992.8. All right, and the B side, this is a data sheet, so you can see the what it calls out. Capacitors up to 100 millifarad, inductors up to 20 Henry. That's crazy large. Uh, so, yeah, ESR up to capacitors with 50 uh, millifarad and resistors up to 50 mega ohm. And just to share some of the rest of the data sheet with you, it has a frequency, an F generator. So, it has some other functions here. You can see what it does. The box it came in, so it came in a little nicer box and description. So that was a B side, okay. And then the CEM, it oh, by the way, it came with all this stuff the probes, the little clip pods. It came with one of these guys, too. And that's what it says it can do capacitors up to 20 millifarad. Resistance up to 2 giga ohm. Inductance up to 2,000 Henry. That's just crazy. wonder if it really can. <laughs> okay, let's try a little small capacitor. Try on the small range. This is a 50 picofarad. Okay, 79 picofarad there. Let's just try this quick. Forty four picofarad. And forty six. Well, those guys seem to like to agree. Okay, and then I stuck it in here and I had to lean it so it touched against the pins, and it's uh, saying 47 picofarad. Hey guys, before we summarize this, I just want to say give it a thumbs up if you like it. That helps the channel a lot, it really does. So just go ahead and click it, hit that like button. 
and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so, okay? And and I want to thank my patrons for all the support. And you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. And thanks for everybody for watching videos. Okay, so let's get to this. You know, we did a big old air corn doctor. I guess uh, literally there's a piece of wood dowel in there. So, but still, air corn, right? And then we did ferrite inductors. We did some big caps. And we looked at this big old capacitor bank. We took a reading on one side. Now, this thing does have those uh, resistors, so that might have thrown it off a little bit. But, you know, reading big capacitors is nice. And these things claim 100 millifarad. That's huge, 100,000 microfarads. So that's big. Okay, cost, about 30 bucks for this guy. You know, this is the B-side and the Drock. They're about 30 bucks. And, and, and that's off Amazon. And this guy was about 15 bucks off Amazon. And just took a few minutes to assemble it. And as far as displays, this guy and this guy probably had the larger displays. It's a little bit smaller. As far as functionality or what they did, these guys read pretty close as far as accuracy. I think they're all close enough for accuracy. But this guy also gave a diode drop on the, on the MOSFET reading. Now, once they've identified the source and drain, you can take your multimeter, just go read that and get that information as well so as identifiers and taking the gain measurement on that bjt transistor that's all pretty cool stuff but use them as inexpensive lcr meters where they replace an lcr meter like this that costs about 165 dollars uh i mean true this guy you can have different frequency ranges and do things like that but man for an inexpensive test these scenes they have different interfaces. These guys both have the ZIF sockets. This has, you know, the banana jacks and the little squeezy things where you squeeze the part in. But, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Give me your comments below, okay? Give me your ideas, your suggestions, and I hope this helped. Okay? Hey, we'll see you next time. Thanks.